Earlier I spoke with Nikhil Thomas. He's a microbiologist and immunologist at Dalhousie University who's been studying data about variants and their clinical implications. And he takes us through what we know about these variants so far. So what we're knowing first about the uh, UK variant or B117 is that it definitely replicates faster and because of that it's transmitted at a higher frequency. The variant that was first isolated in South Africa, also known as B1351, it has a slight change in the so-called spike protein and because of that the antibodies that are raised against it slightly or don't interact with it as well. So, and that's in, more relevant with respect to the AstraZeneca vaccine, which showed limited coverage uh, for the uh, 1351 South African variant. So, uh, you know, when you hear a story about a condo building in Mississauga, a lot of Canadians live in high rises. Is that concerning uh, to you that, that, that a variant such as the one that was first detected in South Africa could be in? Uh, a, a high-rise tower? Should residents be worried? So for public health, the main strategy here would be to suppress the spread of these variants uh, as a, a huge priority. Uh, again, our, our main battle against this virus will be our vaccine, uh, of course, for uh, our way out of this. Now, the measures that we have to take in terms of infection prevention and control uh, contact tracing, all of those things have to be maintained. And with respect to these variants, there's a, a in heightened priority really to make sure that we suppress them quickly because the, the escape of these variants in a very broad way into the general population would be of something of concern. We've already seen this in the UK where the B117 variant spread. And because of that, there was considerable pressure on the healthcare system in the UK. And again, that's what we want to avoid here in Canada. And these variants, they're more deadly, they're more infectious. I mean, how would you sort of characterize them? Right now, the, the early data is saying that, at least with the UK variant, it re replicates faster. And just because of that, it can spread, especially in the vulnerable population, faster. So the clinical outcomes for those individuals in long-term care homes and in immunocompromised individuals, that's of concern. Now. These popular or so-called variants in the media that we've heard about, those are, uh, you know, the death rates that are associated with them. It's not really clear if they cause increased death rate. Now, increased case rate, yes, definitely that is the case for the UK variant. What we also hear is that there are even other variants that are forming. And what we've seen in the early data there is that those variants actually reduce our innate immune response or the way our body initially fights off these virus threats. So it's really a changing landscape. Uh, multiple things are happening. Again, we have to stay the course, be prepared for vaccination, get vaccinated as soon as you can, uh, and take that option immediately. Are these vaccines going to work against these variants? So again, the Data for AstraZeneca is uh, less so against the South African variant. Uh, I should, you know, when I say that, it does cover uh, up to 50% with respect to mild disease. Now, they didn't cover the severe disease outcomes because of the trial and how quick it happened. The Pfizer and Moderna vaccines fortunately maintain excellent coverage against both the UK variant and the South African variant. Uh, those uh, the, those strain numbers as well. So again, uh, our best tools right now um, are maintain uh, to maintain uh, the fight against the virus are the Pfizer vaccine and the Moderna vaccine, in addition to the AstraZeneca vaccine, which still will provide coverage. Nikhil Thomas is a microbiologist and immunologist at Dalhousie University in Halifax.